What's up guys, welcome to today's video. Now this is gonna be a different one than you're used to. It's gonna be not so happy, not so jovial, definitely something different. It's actually gonna be kind of a downer, maybe a little bit for some people to hear, but this is something that I've, I've been wanting to do for a very long time, and I just wasn't sure when I was going to do it, but today, I just got back from leg day. Um, you're probably wondering why I have the beanie on, and uh, I got this huge, huge, I don't know if you can see that, yeah, oh, you can see it, yeah, definitely. So I got this huge, huge cyst, um, and I just knew that if I went into the gym without a beanie on, without covering it, that I was not gonna be able to get as good of a workout in because I knew people would be staring at me. Now, you guys know me, you know, I don't really have any problem with, you know, going into a store right now and having this on my head and uh, talking to people, meeting people, that's not a big problem. But when it, you know, when you go try to work out, people just don't have a filter. So they'll be staring at you, they'll be whispering about you. They don't have a filter, they don't understand what they're doing, you know, because when I see someone whispering about me and I know I have a giant, big old bad cyst on my head, I know that they're, they're, they're talking about me. They're not whispering about something else. And whether or not you know that bothers me, or I'm okay with it, or whatever, where I've progressed in my in my personality as as far as how I deal with that kind of a, a situation, uh, it's distracting. You know what I mean? And so I put the beanie on. That reminds me, though, of this story that I've wanted to tell you guys. I I just don't. I just I just didn't know where I was going to tell you guys this story because this is kind of out of my MO, you know, I'm kind of like, I guess you guys can kind of look to me as, you know, like the, the guy with the happy face, the guy who always tells you to have a happy face, deal with, you know, adversity and these problems with a smile, you know, try to always look for the silver, the silver lining. And that, that is how I deal with my acne now, but everyone, I mean, you can't, you can't just flip a switch, not, no one, no one can do that. No one can go from zero to a hundred as far as confidence goes or just not caring what people think and say about you. And so at, at one point in my life, I I mean, I, I mostly was dealing with my acne pretty pretty positively. I was, you know, happy with where I was. I mean, even though I had like zits and stuff, I had a lot of friends, I had, you know, this, that, and the other going on. And mostly I, I would do what I've told you guys to do all the time where it's just live your life and don't worry about it. But this one specific time, uh, it finally got to me. And this is definitely something that I don't tell, actually I don't think I've ever told anyone this. I don't really talk about these kind of stories because, I don't know, I, I guess I just haven't gotten comfortable with it. And it's kind of hard to be transparent about this kind of a thing. Uh, because this was the first time that I ever, because <laughs> this was the first time that I'd ever cried because of my acne up to that point in my life i'd always kind of lived this like this macho idea this this idea that like you know you got to be a macho man right so i would always try to like hide my emotions you know try not to cry it wasn't manly to cry so i hadn't cried in four or five years and let me tell you guys crying is so healthy for you it progresses your personality your spirit your understanding of other people's feelings and things like that, it, it's just not healthy to hold those things back. It's good to cry, and whether that be you know a sad cry or a happy cry, cries are important. Um, but at this point in my life, I I wasn't I wasn't okay with crying. You know, it wasn't okay with me, and it had been four or five years since I had cried. And I always you know try to go like real tough about things, real tough about any sort of situation. You know, someone dumps me, someone makes fun of me, someone, you know, I, I do something embarrassing. I always try to just be like, that's okay, whatever. It's all good. I'm cool. I'm Brian. I'm moving on. That's no problem. Uh, but the specific time I got one of these cysts. Now, this one is pretty big. It's pretty bad. And as you can see, it comes off of my my face quite a bit. It's big, very noticeable. And I used to get these cysts, but bigger. Like, I'm telling you, two times as big as this. Um, and I would get these like every maybe like five or six weeks, and they would just come out of nowhere, just like this one did. And this specific time, I was, I think, uh, a sophomore or a junior, so I was like 16 or 17, and it, and it came up on my nose. It was a big one. It was a really, really, really big one. And as soon as I got to school, let me, I, I, I'm just gonna tell you the accumulation of things that happened to me at school that caused me to feel the way that I, I felt that day. I came to school and I went up to my group of friends at the time and immediately the first thing that they say is, oh, look at Rudolph. First thing, I just, I, I just like, really? That like, 
great, awesome, you know, cool. Like we're just gonna, if, but of course I, you know, giggled it off. I was like, ha I know it's crazy, huh? It's it's crazy. Um, and then I go to, and then I go through my first classes. I have like three periods or something like that. Then I have this English class, and in this English class, it was my turn to give a speech that day. So I don't know if you guys have ever been to high school. I'm sure a lot of you guys have. You don't really get to choose whether or not you're going to give that speech. You don't get to tell your teacher, you know, oh, I'm going to do it in a couple more days when my face looks a little better. You just, you have to do it. Otherwise, you're going to fail. So I went to that class and of course it was on my mind. It was just weighing on my mind. I was like, damn, like I have to go on in front of like 40 kids and I have this big, big one. And by the way, to make it even worse, it had a white head, which I don't know if you guys know, that's the worst one because everyone's looking at it, right? So I went into my class and I, and I went up there in front of everybody. It was my turn. It was like, I don't know, four or five people in. I went up on, on stage in front of everybody. And uh, I remember it was so, I remember hearing whispers when I went up there and I'm looking around and I can see people leaning over. And high school is a ruthless man. Like how, you're within earshot, it's quiet. You know, I can hear everything everyone's saying. And I swear, at least two or three different groups said something, you know? I could hear them talking about my, my giant zit, you know, oh, watch out, dude, it's gonna explode, it might get on you, or, you know, whatever else. And it was, it was pretty, I don't know, it was pretty harsh, because then I also have to give my speech and try not to think about everyone talking about my face, looking at my face and whatnot. Then I go from that class, finally get through that class, I'm not feeling that great in the first place now because my whole day has just been, uh, you know, talk bad about Brian's acne. And then finally, the, the, the last thing that just killed me, it just freaking, it killed me, man. I went up to one of my good friends at lunch, so like that class was right before lunch and then I would go to lunch and I went up to one of my really good friends, one of my best friends at the time. Like I would consider him, you know, my top three best friends, if you're putting it by MySpace standards. Um, and the first thing that he does when I walk up to him is he just runs up and pokes my nose right on top of the cyst, like flicks it. I don't know why, I, I mean, ugh, God, I don't know why. And he just thought it was funny and it was just like, oh dude, that's so big, look at it, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. And like, <sighs> It, it just comes down to high school again, right? People, like high school, you haven't experienced enough life to have empathy enough to understand that what you're doing to people when you do that kind of stuff. It's not good to do that kind of stuff to people, no matter what their problem is. You know, if someone has acne or someone's fighting obesity or, you know, someone has a deformity or something, anything at all, it's, it's so bad to make fun of them, especially at such a young, young impressional uh, age. Luckily, I mean, I could get over this kind of stuff, but at that point, man, that point in the day, after one of my best friends pointed it out, I was just like, I was just so tired of, you know, constantly thinking about my acne that day. It just sucked. And like I said, I'm not a guy who cries a lot. Well, I guess, I guess I'm crying right now, but I wasn't a guy who cried a lot at that point. Um, and, I, and I walked to my car, I got in my car finally on the other side of the student parking lot so you know no one's around me or anything and I got in my car I sat down and I just started crying man <laughs> I just started like I just started bawling <laughs> and after that first tear came man I was just like it was so relieving as silly as it sounds it was so relieving to finally just like be <laughs> And one of the things about me is it's it's pretty difficult to get me to start crying. But once I start crying, it's just waterfalls. I can't control it. And I just remember sitting there crying and just saying things, you know, just being like, why do you have to do that kind of, you know, I would, well, of course, there was a lot more cuss words in it at this time. But I remember I just sat there and I just went through each situation and I was just like, what the hell was the point of touching my, my face, touching my cyst? What was the point? Like, what? satisfaction did you get out of that what what purpose did that serve and I it was like this great release of all these emotions I was so like 
just emotionally burdened and it was such a, a sad cry, but at the same time it was like this release of energy, release of all this like pent up, you know, BS that I always had to, I had to deal with for such a long period of time up to that, that point. You know, all the, all the name calling, you know, all the jokes, all the stuff that I, that I took the higher road with, I always, you know, just dealt with it with a smile. It was good to finally just sit there and just think and then just, just take care of it, man. Just like seriously release myself from my ego, release myself from my macho personality and what people thought about me and just, just, just cry, you know, it felt really good. And now here I am sitting, crying in front of a bunch of people uh, who aren't used to seeing me vulnerable and crying. And I'm pretty interested to see what you guys think about it. But it, I, it's the reason I'm crying is it's not only just because you know I'm kind of I'm kind of reliving the situation and just remembering how good it felt. I'm kind of I'm kind of an empathetic crier. If I see someone crying or if I think about crying, I kind of cry. It's one of my weaknesses at this point. But um, just thinking about all the people who have to deal with this, all the people who are in high school right now and who have to deal with these people who just nag at them all the time because, you know, the, the kids that are nagging at them don't have these problems. They don't have these grandiose problems that they've had to dealt with. They're just living their life and they're just concentrated on whatever they see and that's pretty much it. It's just the people in their high school. And I know there are so many people out there who know exactly what I'm talking about, you know? I know there's a lot of people out there who have been just name called and just like, you know, people have pointed at them or, or talked about their acne or maybe you've heard people whispering or, or people have left comments on your pictures or whatever it is. And I wanted to make this video especially for you to show you that I understand where you're coming from. I know exactly where you're coming from. And there's all these people that try, you know, they try to understand or they try to downplay or they try to make it sound like they know how it feels to have a, a severe acne problem, a serious acne problem, or just an acne problem that affects you emotionally. Um, and, I, and I know that this video can, can serve the purpose of showing you that while it's hard, while it seriously is hard, you can, you can change your perspective in time. As you go forward, you can become comfortable with situations like this that's on my forehead that honestly, at that time in my life, I was not comfortable with. I, I was not comfortable with it, but I would try to be comfortable with it. But over the years, you know, of having acne, I've become comfortable with this. And I want you guys to know that while your acne maybe won't leave you anytime soon, you might be stuck with it for many years like I have. I've had it since 15, I'm 22 now. You can become comfortable with it. It's completely in your power to do to be comfortable with it, and 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 I want you to do that. But I also understand that it's it's very difficult, and sometimes you need to release. Sometimes you need that cry because sometimes that cry can change the way you feel. It can it can release you of all this pent up stress that you didn't even know you had. So don't be ashamed to cry. Whether you you know you're a guy or girl, I know a lot of guys watch my channel and they're so macho and stuff and afraid to cry. Don't be afraid, man. Maybe don't tell everyone, go do it, see how it feels. And then maybe you'll change your perspective on crying too because you'll understand more about what it does for you as a human being. I'm kind of rambling now guys, but I, I, I was considering on the drive home whether or not I actually wanted to make this video because I knew that I was gonna cry in it and I know, <laughs> I, I don't know, I, I don't know. I, I just, I'm just not sure what people are gonna say about this and I've never done something that's, that's kind of like, uh, so personal you know I'm, I'm pretty transparent on my channel but I've never done something that's so personal so please guys please try to be nice try to be nice try to accept you know what this is and understand why I put this up um, I hope it helps a lot of people it's legitimately the reason I wanted to put this up more information about my Accutane as far as the dose goes and whatnot in the description below I felt it would be good to keep the story as its own video and you guys can check the, the details Below. But next week we'll be back to normal Accutane and um, hopefully some of these crazy cysts are gone by then. Please guys, if you have any friends or family that are dealing with severe acne and you think that this video might be able to help them get through whatever it is that they're dealing with right now, please send it over to them, you know, post it on your Facebook, whatever you can, because if this can help people then 
I'm so, so willing to put me crying on the internet up, you know? Something that I'm embarrassed, I guess, not really com comfortable about. I'm, I'm comfortable putting it on the internet if it can help you guys. So please share it with your friends, guys. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Team Beyond the Week. Stay strong, guys.